This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7. Again, Shrine Cafeteria, Cary, Ohio, 4 to 7 for some barbecue and bingo. I'll be only there this Thursday this week, so be sure to cancel all your plans and head on over to the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Check out this Mad Canadian social media site, Facebook and Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they where they are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, it is Christmas season. I'm not sure if you know that or not. It's Christmas season, like Thanksgiving's this week, so we're officially like into, we're, by the time some people listen to this, because we're actually releasing this on Thanksgiving, so I have a feeling like a lot of people aren't going to, it might be Black Friday already, it might be Black Friday already, and Kyle, what else are you going to do for like a coffee lover in your life other than just like buy them some really nice premium coffee? And if you know what type of coffee they like, you can actually give them the gift that keeps on giving all year long by buying them a subscribe and save service, which is available through the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, If you don't know what kind of coffee they like, gift cards are available. Or you could just buy them a bunch of different ones and, you know, maybe maybe you just see what happens. Am I right? So uh, and since I was talking about it being Black Friday, let's talk about, Kyle, what a coffee that is. Blacker than black, it is, or darker than dark, it is the Fear No Evil, which is a black roast coffee. It is darker than dark. It is that type of dark. So you can find that coffee. You can buy a bunch more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, YouTube? How's it going, Sloop Cats in our chat? Sloop cat chat. It's sloop cat chat. Kyle. It is the mo- it is the most wonderful week of the year. It, it is. is. It is. It is hate week. It is rivalry <laughs> week. God, I love hate week. <laughs> Kyle, I, we I do have ma- a lot. We do have we do have, we have a lot to get into. Lot. I'd love love to screw yeah. around a little bit more, but yeah. Well, no, no, you're right. Let's we'll get into on. our episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Feeling festive. <laughs> How are you, Jared? You don't say. <laughs> oh, love this. Love this week of the year. It's it is hate week. It is rivalry week. It is that team up north, and it is time to know your enemy, Jared. The team up north, Wolverines. There you go. Yeah, uh, it is. It is finally that week, Kyle. I'm I'm nervous, but I want to state why I'm nervous. I I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm nervous because I'm afraid of this game. It's 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 kind of to uh, to point to your hat for a second. Audio listeners, I'm sure you figured out maybe what's happening by now to point at your hat for a second. This feels a little bit like Christmas. This feels a little bit because it's just like. We haven't. Pl- when was the last time Ohio State hadn't played Michigan for this long? I mean, you could argue they didn't really play much during the Cooper years, but like, do do we have to go back to what decade for the last time Ohio State and Michigan took two years to play each other? Yeah, I think. I think Buckeye Zach said it. The turn of the um. Turn of the century. Or, or yeah, the turn of the, to the 1900s. To the- well, yeah, I think we, I think we all knew which, which century you meant, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been close to near a hundred years. Maybe, maybe, maybe there was a world war two year where they didn't possibly play maybe, but anyway, we don't need to get into that. Should look that up mm-hmm. beforehand, but it's just like, it's so. Oof. Ohio state and Michigan will be playing football. And it's just a pound. It's just like, bump, 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 bump. Like it's, it's overwhelming. It's been too long, 
and I'm just so ready for it. And I'm beyond ready for it. I need it to happen yesterday. I need it to happen yesterday. Yep. It's I needed it to last, happen last year. Last but time I, it was night. It was 1917. There you go. Buckeye Zach was all over it. So so they so they didn't they didn't miss any games during the 40s then. Nope. Or the okay. 30s. Well, it's just I was thinking maybe World War II. That's all. Um, gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right, Jared. Let's get right into it. Uh, Michigan is ten and one coming into this game. Seven and one in Big Ten conference play, averaging four hundred forty-seven total offense, letting up three hundred eighty-six on defense. Led by quarterback Cade McNaught. <laughs> Man, we started off really great, Jared. You almost you. got McNamara. there. McNamara. I almost. McNamara. Thank you. Um, looking at him, th- doesn't really need to do much in the air. Yeah, he he's thrown for just over 2,000 yards. But you know what? When he throws the ball, Jared, he, he doesn't really make mistakes. Only two interceptions right. for the year, but only 14 touchdowns for this year. Yeah, um, I, I think... And it just depends upon if Harbaugh screws him up or not. But I th- I think Michigan's better quarterback is on the bench, in my opinion. Um, but but we'll we'll see if Harbaugh has a chance to mess him up. Uh, yeah, their wide receivers are are fine. Um, who they have left from a health standpoint, um, it's I, there's no one here I'm particularly afraid of. Would you echo that, Kyle? From a from uh, well, a passing standpoint, from a passing standpoint, not not really. I mean, it, they they do pass the ball around very well. They have they pass it to four wide receivers. They got two tight ends that they pass it to. So this is this isn't really a game that Hostet really has to focus on on a really elite wide receiver. They're going to find the they're going to find the open person wherever it's going to be. So it could be, it could be Cornelius. It could be Roman. It could be their big tight end who's second on the team in um, receptions and yards. Um, Eric All. Yeah, y- you got to cover everybody in, in this game and not really, don't really have to focus on one person. Historically, Kyle, um, Ohio State has had trouble covering tight ends, but I really don't feel like that's been an issue this year. I feel like there's been a couple situations in which we were like, oh, they got a really good tight end and Ohio State historically has issues with really good. But I don't really feel like that's been an issue much this year. Um, so you, maybe you look at. But, yeah, I think Cornelius Johnson, Eric, all are, are probably the two guys you have to watch most from a pass defense standpoint. But there, there's mm-hmm. no there's no one person here like we saw you know, potentially against Michigan state, like we saw against Purdue, there's no like one guy who you feel like you need to keep an eye on for better or worse. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't think there, there's no wide receiver here that I think is like a, Oh, you better big, you better give him a big cushion and you better double team him, and you better do this and you better do that, which is really yeah. good. It's really good that you don't have to double team him or do any of that stuff because that gives you more of a chance to focus on the running game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Eric always had counting this up has had 20 receptions in the past four games for about almost 170 yards. Well, oh, actually, sorry, about 200 yards in, in the past four games here. So that's most of his, almost all of his yardage, it seems like in the past four, four games here. So Right. Maybe it's just the scheme. Maybe it's the teams that they've been playing. Michigan State, Penn State, two of the four teams. He's seen the ball a lot in those games. So, but those two teams couldn't be more opposite, right? Because you're talking about one of the better secondaries in the Big Ten versus Michigan State, who's not particularly great in the secondary. So, I, you know what I mean? So, you you say maybe it's scheme, maybe it's not scheme. And of course, there's a lot more to a defense than simply the, their defensive backs, of course, right? But, Mm That, but the, but as far as like big, as far as like quality Big Ten defenses, those two are are fairly opposite. Uh, but like yeah. I said, not not having one big pass catcher really will help Ohio State focus in on the running backs. Uh, Haskins and Corum are a uh, a two headed system that they have going there. 
Um, Donovan Edwards, who's a name you might remember if you follow recruiting, uh, a guy who I think was once a, a pretty favorited guy to end up at Ohio State, um, ends up at Michigan. He receives carries sometimes, but it's primarily Haskins and Corum. Um, and both of these guys are good. These are good running backs. I have nothing negative to say about either of them. Uh, Haskins do. does receive <laughs> the majority do, of the carries. I'll say that. Um, but if I'm going to levy a criticism against them, it's going to be that they're not nearly as good as Walker, who Ohio State decimated last week. Well, to be fair to Ohio State got out early and made Michigan State abandon the run, too. I to but do you think do you think that they can't do that against this Michigan team? If you want to start talking about the defensive side of the ball, do you, what is there something about this Michigan team or maybe it's just the fact that they're they're on the road, they're playing in Ann Arbor, but I don't know is this defense better, significantly better than Michigan State's defense? Yeah, I think overall, overall, yeah, yes, I think so. Ab ab absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I think their their strength in this in this defense here. I mean, obviously Hutchinson is probably one of the first names everybody thinks about sure. when, they, when they see he, this Michigan defense here. And, and he's in the thumbnail. So. He's in the YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> um, but honestly, guy you really keep out for is their nickelback, uh, Daxton Hill, kind of like the the bullet position that we're, we're used to here all over the field. Um, the second on the team in, in tackles here. So Daxon Hill is definitely another guy um, to keep an eye out. And of course they're, I believe he's their graduate uh, transfer. Uh, Josh, Josh Ross by far the t the, the person who's uh, leading the team in tackles to um, all over the field as well. So you got, you got Hill on one side, Ross on the other side. There, they're they're gonna they're gonna stop plays. They're gonna stop a lot of those crossing routes that Ohio State was very successful in during the Michigan State game. But I feel, I feel like Ohio State has a pretty good opportunity over the top if we're able to get good pass protection. I I feel pretty confident with our wide receivers versus their safeties, though. Kyle, do you have Michigan's full schedule pulled up? I want to do a thing. I do. I do. Cool. Um, did they play Minnesota this year? They didn't, did they? Uh, they did, did not play Minnesota. But they played Rutgers. What was the final score of Rutgers? Uh, that score was hmm, 20 to 13. Ohio State won that game 52 to 13. All right. Uh, did they play Maryland? Uh, they did. How, how, what was the final score of that game? 59-18. Ohio State won 66-17. That one was close. That one was close. I'll give them that. Uh, did Penn they State? play Indiana? I know they played Indiana. They, played Indi they did play Indiana. Final score? 29-7. Mm -hmm. Ohio State won 54-7. to Are you starting to see okay. a pattern here yet? Uh, Penn State. 21-17. 33-17. Uh, did they play Nebraska? Actually, that, that one's an actual question. Did they play Nebraska? They did. Okay. They did. Uh, final score of that game. 32-29. Ohio State, 26-17. That one's not quite in the, in the same thing we saw, but still, okay. Okay. Uh, and, and, and did they play? They did not play one. Purdue, right? They did not play yep. Purdue. Did they play Michigan State? I know they did. <laughs> they played their big brother. Yes. What was the final score of that game? It was 37 to 33 loss. And Ohio State won that game 56 to 7. Mm. Now, Kyle, what I what, one of the things I want you to take away from here is that the defensive number is typically pretty similar. They're letting up typically in the same general area the same amount of points. Mm-hmm. Within maybe a, a touchdown or less, right? The the other teams score m most of the time very similar. 
However, Ohio State, with the exception of maybe the Maryland and the Nebraska game, Ohio State has drastically outscored uh, Michigan in all of those games. Mm -hmm. Could we, with the data available, make a generalization that their defenses are roughly the same but that Ohio how, how, State's offense is significantly better. I'd say with how State, how Ohio State has been playing this month. Yes, I, you, I would say yeah. You can you can compare. Well, this goes all the similar, way back to yes. October. Now, to, in in Ohio State's favor here, none of the Big Ten games because Minnesota, Michigan didn't play Minnesota. None of the games mentioned were played in September when when Ohio State's offense were was legitimately very bad because they played three at a conference game and Minnesota was not a common opponent. So Ohio State kind of lucked out in the comparison there. Uh, but mm -hmm. this goes all the way back to October. Mm -hmm. So, Kyle, by that assessment, Ohio State's going to win this football game. I rest my case. All right. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't argue against stats like that. <laughs> Austin says right. good um, enough for me. I got a yes who, from Buckeye who, Zach. Yeah. Who's your, who's your Buckeye Zach also mentioned another defensive end on the other side of Hutchinson really got to keep an eye out for is uh, David uh, Jabo as well. Both, both players very similar. Like I look Hutchinson has nine and a half sacks. Ojabo, 10 sacks. The real key thing, when you look at the stats here, Ojabo has five forced fumbles yeah. for this year. Yeah, yeah. So, some defensive ends are very good about sort of getting that arm around uh, the outside arm. I was about to say, I was trying to say, is it left or right arm? Well, it depends on which side they're rushing from, stupid. Yeah. Their outside arm around and sort of stripping the ball. Uh, some some defensive ends just have an instinct for that. Uh, and he, yep. and Ajabo is definitely one of them. So that is yep. definitely a concern to keep an eye on. All yeah. Right. He's an absolute oh, stud. No, both no, of, both of these defensive ends at Michigan hmm. are studs. Yep. Let's they now are, that, yes. that being said, I'm tired of people like, Oh, look at Hutchinson. He's pretty. And he's good. Like, don't get me wrong. He's good, but he's like, he's a giant white guy. And everyone's like, he's the next Bosa just cause he wears 97 and is a giant white guy. No, he's not. He's very good. Don't get me wrong. He's very good. He's, he's not a Bosa. Bosa. He's not, he's no Bosa. Uh, one, one last stat before, um, before we take a quick um, ad break here, Jared. Uh, their main their main running back here, Haskins. Yeah, two hundred sixteen rushing attempts for thousand sixty three yards and thirteen touchdowns. Okay. Okay. Two sixteen. One oh six three thirteen. Okay. Henderson. Henderson. One hundred and fifty touches, so sixty six uh -huh. less touches. Uh huh. Thousand and ninety eight yards. Okay. And fourteen touchdowns. Wow. On that many less carries, huh? That's that's embarrassing. That's senior embarrassing. versus freshman. Senior versus freshman. <laughs> oh, and then Kyle twisted the knife. <laughs> oh man, you stuck the nice knife in, then you twisted it. Oh man, that was harsh, Kyle. That was dirty. You did him dirty. <laughs> All right, and on that note, Jared, I think it's a good time for an ad <laughs> break here. <laughs> Why don't, why, don't you, why don't you tell us some of the great flavors that uh, our listeners could get from the Iron Bean Coffee Company to their special loved one or family friend or friend this holiday season? Any kind of friend, really. We don't need to specify. Um, let's see. Kyle specifically asked for flavors, so we're going to the flavors. Uh, let's see. We have the Unicorn Coffee, which is their R&D coffee. What flavor is it? Well, you don't know until you get it. Like that, that's the adventure of the unicorn. Then there's the salted caramel or salted caramel, whichever you prefer. It tastes the same either way. Uh, there's the vanilla hazelnut, which is, I feel like are two classic coffee flavors. Cinnamon roll still sold out. Sorry guys. Uh, the butter pecan. I know a lot of people love pecan coffee. That's not necessarily my lane for coffee, but I know it's insanely popular. Uh, the peanut butter chocolate. I have had multiple people in our discord server 
swear by the peanut butter chocolate. I've not got it yet myself, but I, I plan to soon. I am actually due up for an order here soon. So uh, that, that might be in That might be in it. That might be in it. Uh, the bananas foster also a flavor available. Uh, the seasonal flavor, get it while you can. Cause I can't guarantee how long it'll be. There is the white chocolate peppermint. Uh, that is an amazing sounding coffee. I might have to follow myself up on that. I <laughs> follow myself on my own threat there. Uh, Oh, Kyle, Kyle, I have very bad news for you. The Irish grog, uh, better known as the Dylan's grog, uh, currently sold out. Guys, this is what I'm telling you. You you have to buy these coffees while you still can. The Intense Blueberry is available. The Mint Chocolate Chip is available. Uh, the Intense Blueberry is available. I think I already said that, but the Mom's Carrot Cake still sold out. You guys got to jump on these coffees while you still can. So you can jump on these coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mentioned earlier that you can catch the Mad Canadian again this Thursday at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, 47, for some barbecue and bingo. Let me eat, read you some reviews who've had some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, here's one saying, awesome barbecue, cold brisket, love the ribs, can't wait to have it again. Uh, here's another one that just... Plain says, great barbecue, support local. I like that. Uh, you know we like another, that. <laughs> yes. And then here, here's another here. It says, got the sampler to try it all. Killer fruit in service. Can't wait to have it again. What, what, more, what more reviews do you need to, to get out of your seat? Head on over to Cary to get some of that uh, good old barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't forget to follow him on Facebook and Twitter. For more information about him and his food truck and what he'll be heading to next. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. There you go. Kyle, it's time to pre- it's time to throw our predictions out there. It's time to predict this game. Um, so where do you want to start? Do Should we start with the exact same place we always start, which makes what I just asked a stupid question? Yes, Jared. Why don't we always start where <laughs> we always start? Oh, Kyle. And by the way, we have two. I need to tell a quick story. We have two guest pickers this week. Why? Okay. So uh, August ish, I suppose. Right. Austin, do you really want to do you really want to do that right now where I'm I'm about to be your voice? Do you really want to poke fun right now? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so maybe about I, I want to say August or so. Uh, Austin, who's one of our longest running fans, like one, one of our OGs over, uh, in the sloop cats, a uh, sloop cat long before they were called sloop cats. Right. So he sends me uh, a message in the discord, essentially saying, Hey, when do we get to pick our sloop pick weeks? And can I claim Michigan now? I said right now. And yes. So every, so we started just every, so the sloop cats start claiming their weeks for sloop for the sloop picks right, and uh, not long after Austin like I gave Austin Michigan, uh, Dinger says um excuse me, I had Michigan last year, and the game got canceled and I asked you, can I get Michigan next year? And I was like, oh, I now that you mentioned that, I do remember it. So now we have two guest pickers this week. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Let, let's, and by let's the way, start so, it off. And, and to Austin, real quick, uh, he's the first he's the first one of our sloop pick pickers to um answer all of our other questions too. So uh, Austin will be playing along and player to watch and matchups and all that. So that'll be fun. All right, Ohio State player to watch, Jared. Who do you have? I'm going with Nati- N- <laughs> Nicholas Ooh, Petit try- Ferrer. Uh, I, I think I had to pick one here, right? I had to pick one. Um, I, I, I very easily could have, but I feel like NPF NPF is going to go against Hutchinson, right? I feel like that's the big matchup here. Uh, the other side is almost as important. Uh, the other side's almost as important with Dewan Jones and Ajabo. And of course, like the interior is always important as well, but like 
Michigan has a really great pair of defensive ends. The offensive tackles are going to have to step up their game and not step up their game. They've been playing really great lately, um, but they're going to have to continue to be on top of their game is how I should probably say that. And uh, neutralize these really good Michigan tight ends, excuse me, defensive ends. That being said, Ohio state has been really good at neutralizing really good defensive ends this season, especially like October on. So they've done a really good job neutralizing really good defensive ends. So I would love to see that continue this week. Uh, NPF's had a great season and I, I feel like, he deserves to get his name call, called out here in the Ohio State player to watch. All right. Um, our guest picker took my pick, so <laughs> which was uh, Steel Chamber. So I'm going to go with the bullet. I'm going to go with Hickman. I'm going to go with Hickman here. He's the guy who's going to be. Um, he's 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 going to have to be the guy to watch. As I mentioned, they're tight. They're tight end. Um, Eric all he's going to have to get his nose in there to stop Haskins and Corum and Edwards on the run there. He's going to have to be there, do it all in that within that seven yards to line of scrimmage there. He's going to have to be all over the field. And I, and I feel like he's going to, like he has all year. So I'm going to go with Hickman here. I, I think that's a great shout out. I think, I think that Austin is a great shout out again, especially because of, you know, what we are talking about with Eric all um, he does. I guess I should read his full answer. He says steel chambers. If he plays well against the run, uh, Teton has little to no chance at scoring enough points to keep up with this Ohio state offense. And you know, what you were saying, Kyle about Eric all and sort of the surge that he's had over the past month, and with Steel Chambers being, I would say, inarguably the best cover linebacker that Ohio State has. Of course, then there's Hickman, who will also play a role in covering Eric All. These are all, these are all, I, I think, really good points by both of you. Yes. All right. Enemy player of the watch, Jared. Enemy player to watch. Um, now, Kyle, you're you're a nicer guy than me. Uh, Austin also stole my pick or Austin stole my pick this time, but I didn't change it because screw you, Austin. <laughs> no, uh, Adrian Hutchinson. I think it's the right answer again. I, I probably could have been a nice guy and been like a job. I'd like, I could have probably switched it to a job, but no, I'm, I'm really highlighting this NPF versus Hutchinson matchup that we're going to see so much so that they're both going in the YouTube thumbnail. So that's where we're focusing this week. Um, and you know, we're going to, we're going to see this pop back up yeah. during my key matchup area. Uh, Kyle, uh, actually let me read Austin's real quick. Since he also picked Hutchinson, he says, if Jones and MPF can keep him from wreaking havoc, Stroud will have time to throw and torch the defense. And absolutely. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. Dax yeah. Hill would have also been a good answer, but I probably, you shouldn't have said that. And I shouldn't have said that before Kyle had a chance to speak. And that is my pick. It is Daxton Hill. <laughs> <laughs> it is Daxton Hill. A defensive back or nickel back. Somebody's got to make a play to stop one of these three outstanding wide receivers who, for some reason, are not nominated. Some, some reason? Some reason were not nominated for a yearly award. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Moving forward, <laughs> moving forward. Yes. Um, key <laughs> matchup, key matchup. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and roll down to Austin first here on this one. He says the Teton safeties versus Ohio state's earth, wind and fire. Uh, Ohio state is going to take deep shots and the safeties are going to need to shade and help their corners. The corners will be burnt on some plays. So I'm interested to see if the safeties can break up big plays enough on occasion. Problem. I think the safeties are going to have is there's three wide receivers and two safeties. <laughs> and like, you don't know which one's going deep at any, it's mo a lot of these one that goes deep most of the time, but not always. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who's your Buckeye Zach asks, uh, who will he'll match up on more Alave or Wilson? I, 
I don't know if Michigan does that. I don't know if they do the uh, Hill follows the best wide receiver strategy. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if that's how they do things. To be honest with you. So who do you got? Who do you got for the key matchup, Jared? Ohio State's offensive line versus Michigan's defensive line. I'm sticking with my theme on this one. Um, this is all about Ohio State's offense. In my opinion, I think Michigan's offense is going to score 14 to 24 points. I, I think that's what they're capable of going back and looking at Michigan's games against good opponents. Against good opponents, they scored 21 against Penn State. They scored 29 against Indiana. They scored 33 against Michigan State. They scored 33 against Northwestern. They scored 32 against Nebraska. They scored 38 against Wisconsin, and that's back when Wisconsin hadn't really figured things out yet. Uh, they scored 20 against Rutgers. Like, they barely hardly ever go above 30 points, and a lot of the defenses I just mentioned aren't as good as Ohio State's defense. If it, Like, if we're looking for a real solid comparison i think penn state's about the most solid comparison or maybe nebraska's about the most solid comparison you're gonna get defensively and they didn't break 30 in either one of those cases so i think no matter what michigan's probably good for like i said 14 to i, I want to say like 17 to 24 points i think that's about where michigan ends up right so okay. it's all about what can ohio state's offense do and in order for Ohio State's offense to achieve and achieve in the way that they need to achieve to win this game and not just win this game, but look dominant in this game will start as it always does start from the offensive line, neutralizing those amazing defensive ends, getting a push up the middle for Henderson, even on plays in which the blocking and the play call isn't perfect to still get five, six, seven yards instead of one, two, three yards. And that starts mm -hmm. up front. And yep. that's that's the key in this game. If this is going to be another game in which Ohio State doesn't even have third downs to convert on, it'll have to start up front just like it did last week. Ohio State matchup or, you know, Ohio State versus Michigan matchup to watch. Ohio State's offensive line, Michigan's defensive line. That is strength on strength, in my opinion. And I got Ohio State's linebacker versus... I'm trying to think of a good way to put this because I don't want to say versus the running back or versus the tight end, but pretty much Ohio State versus like that five yard spread, like what's in front of them, whether it's whether it's the playing the zone there or stopping okay. the run, stopping the run. Because one of the things that we've we've seen in the past couple of months is a lot of soft coverage all over defensive backs and linebackers, more so the linebackers too. We've seen a lot of soft coverage by design, but I'm, not last but week, not last week though. <laughs> I want to see more of last week this week, but I think they can get away with it. Yeah, possibly, possibly, but we mentioned they have a lot of, um, a lot of great talent on the tight end and wide receiver crew there. So it's going to be a big don't. challenge for the, it's, <laughs> It's a it's going to be a big challenge for the linebackers. I th I think Michigan's going to try to uh, try to abuse um, the linebackers here, and it's going to be little ding passes to the tight ends. It's going to be crossing routes right in the middle there. Can our linebackers um, maintain their zone, their area, without without running into each other or anything like that? So I think I think really keep an eye on how Ohio State's linebackers do versus what's around them. Like the intermediate passing game. Yeah. The linebackers right. versus the intermediate passing game. Is that how you want to phrase yeah. that? Yeah. All right. All let's right, see what Austin. No, we didn't. Oh yeah, no, you we said, did. You said Austin. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. I did. I did. All right. The spread here, Jared, as we lock this in, Ohio State is a seven and a half point favorite. Yes, sir. Uh, Kyle, I, I'm, I'm not going to give away my final score yet, but I'm, I am picking Ohio state to both win and cover. I am too. There am you too. go. I, I think seven and a half is stealing money. I think this game, I think this game maybe isn't a blowout to the same level that last week was a blowout, 
like if you watched Michigan Ohio State versus Michigan State last week and you want a repeat of that, you're not going to get a repeat of that. It's not going to be that easy. It's not going to be that fun. But it's also not going to be Nebraska. <laughs> like yeah. it's going to be not as good as Michigan State, but a lot better than Nebraska. Does that make sense? Am I am I framing that correctly? And I think seven and a half points is stealing money. I I personally would have expected this game to be more like uh, Kyle. If you had to set the line on this game, where would you have set the line? Austin, you're a good line setter. Where would you have set the line on this? Eleven and a half. I would have gone higher than eleven and a half. Austin's typing. Let's see what Austin has to say. Austin, seventeen and a half is what I was thinking. Okay. All right. So what what are our final scores here, Jared? I have Ohio State winning. 48 to 21. Uh, Michigan's yeah. going to score their points. Come on. Yep. Go. Oh, and yep. uh, Stewart says he would have had it at 13 and a half. Um, I, yeah, 48, 21, which I think is a very nice prediction. Um, yes, the very nice. Ohio State's offense is going to score. And like I said before, I think Michigan will end up in that 17 to 24 range. That's about what their offense is good for against a good defense. And yeah, Ohio it, State's kind of... offense is just too smooth and too efficient right now. They can be slowed down, but they cannot be stopped. I don't, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think this is another instance in which we see Ohio State like not punt for the first half. I think we'll see a punt in the first half. Don't panic. I think Ohio Eight State points. will punt in the first half. <laughs> I also think Eight. Ohio State probably gets stopped in the red zone in the first half a couple, maybe once or twice this game. Don't panic. It's fine. It's it's not going to be super easy. They're not going to get all 48 of those points in the first half. They'll have to go into the yeah. third quarter for some of those points. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Don't panic. Yep. I still I have, think this ends up looking really nice. Yep, and I have Ohio State 45, Michigan 24. Oh, that is also a very nice prediction. Yes, I, I really like it. It's like our predictions. They are both very nice. Very nice predictions. All right, Kyle. Um, let's see. Do you want to read Austin this time and I'll read Dinger? Sure. All right. Austin says here, the big one, the game, top five, probably matchup as the game should be. It is always nice that when that team up north is good, it makes the game feel different. Could this be the year that the Wolverines finally get over the Ohio State hurdle? I, w- I won't hold you in suspense. No, it won't. I really don't think this game will be close. t has faced no good offenses. This is true. Whereas OSU is the offense, the number one offense of the country. If Thorne can torch t imagine what the 2021 Heisman winner can do to that defense. I'm genuine when I tell you my score prediction, and I really think it is highly realistic. Ohio State blows Michigan out 70 to 26. Go. Buckeyes. Man, 70 to 26. Here, here's my here's my only criticism. That, that, right, that right there is evil Ryan Day, if that happens. That's evil Ryan Day. Guys, guys, can I get some evil Ryan Day in the chat? Oh, Hoosier's already beat me to it. I need some evil Ryan Day in the, Like that's <laughs> that's Ryan Day throwing the ball with half of the fourth quarter gone. That's like six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Ryan Day is still throwing bombs from Stroud to Alave. Yeah. Oh, Russell is it a reverse? That's, re- that, 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 that's a reverse nice. All right. All right. What does Dinger With say? With a Jared? half gainer. Um, Dinger says, um, he says, Teton's edge rushers are legit. That That is definitely a thing Kyle and I have covered in this episode so far. Um, they are also only two of 22 players. I, I agree. Uh, can they single-handedly keep Ohio State under 30 points? Unlikely. I agree. Uh, can Teton score more than 30 against a team capable of shutting down the run? Unlikely. Also, I never pick against the Buckeyes, so Ohio State to win and cover. I totally agree with everything both of you said. 70 to 26 might be... Listen, Austin, here's my thing. If Michigan scores 26 points... I feel like the only way Ohio state gets to 70 is if they also shut down Michigan's offense, which gives the Ohio state offense more opportunities. 
Um, so maybe if like a couple of those are big plays, but Ohio State's been really good at shutting down other teams' big plays this year. Uh, say mm-hmm. what you want to say about not liking Ohio State's sort of soft, soft shell defense that we've seen from them several points this year. They've been excellent at stopping big plays. Yep. For yep, what it's absolutely. worth. Absolutely. That being said, Kyle, to contradict something you said earlier in the show, I don't think that these Michigan wide receivers are scary or like well, they're, they're, ta- legit. They're, they're talented. They're, they're, they're talented. Eh, I mean, they're talented because they're scholarship athletes who start at Michigan, right? But would they would tr- they would have transferred two years ago if they were at Ohio State? Let's be honest. They would have transferred most, most two rec- years most ago. Most wide receivers who are not on the Ohio State team would yeah. transfer out. I mean. Jam- Jameson I mean, Williams literally made the Bolitnikoff. I get it. But I said two years ago. <laughs> okay. All right, Jared. Let's get into some Ask Sloopcast questions. We're going to start off with Austin Formations. I said all of that to say here. I don't think Ohio State plays a soft shell this week. I think we see a a defensive style similar to what we saw against Michigan state. I don't think we see a soft shell this week. All right. Austin over unders Hutchison sacks over under 0.5 over. I'm just not going to bet against Hutchinson getting a sack in the game. Yeah. I'll I'll go over as well. I'll go over. It won't be against Nicholas Petit Ferrer. I'm I, I, you didn't ask, but I'm saying it. It won't be against Nicholas Petit Ferrer. It won't. Yeah. Ohio State total yards, 585 and a half. That's, that's a, a lot. huge that's, number. That's a lot. I'm going to go under, but I understand with your prediction, I can understand why <laughs> you're given that total yardage, but I'm going to go under. Ohio State is currently averaging 559 and a half. Um, and Michigan's defense is too good to say that Ohio state goes over their average yardage for the year. So no, I'm going to go under. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Uh, Ohio state, big three touchdowns, meaning earth, wind and fire four and a half touchdowns. And I'm also going to go under here. I think three, yeah. I think three and a half is a better number. So I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll go with under here. Yeah, I, I would have probably gone for it if it was three and a half. At four and a half, like, you just never know, right? Like, mm-hmm. Michigan's defense is good enough that they're going to slow down Ohio State's offense, which means you might see more scores from the running backs and tight ends because you're playing more of a red zone offense against Michigan than you were against Michigan State, where they were just bombing yep. the ball. Um, so, yeah, I think you see more tight end and running back touchdowns in this game versus last week. So I agree with Kyle. I'm going to go under. All right. Uh, moving on. Haskins total touchdowns at one and a half. If it's, if that's over, that's a, that's a problem for Ohio state. I mean, not necessarily. I've already said, I think Michigan scores 24 points. I don't think if all three of them come from Haskins, I don't think that's a, in fact, I think that's probably a a good thing. Cause that means they're not scoring from far out. Maybe. I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I, I'm just going to say under, cause I feel like he probably gets one, but yeah, I, I'll I go, I'm going to go under. Too. Ultimately. I just wouldn't bet this bet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, T 10 offensive turnovers at two and a half. They don't really turn the ball over. Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go under. I agree. Go under. I agree. I'd be worried at 0.5. Even at, even yeah, I feel like half, I'd still I go. go uh, I feel like I'd still go under if it was one and a half. Quite frankly, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Ohio State punts at three and a half. Ooh, that, that's 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 the perfect one right there. Three and a half punts for Ohio State. I'll I'll go with over. Just because the second half is a thing, even if Ohio State is up early. Yeah. The. Yeah, I'm I'm going to I'm actually going to go under on this one cuz I don't think like I don't think we have to worry about the second half the way we did against Michigan State. I think Ohio State will probably have their first team offense on the field for the vast majority of the game. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Um I think if Ohio, I think Ohio State's bigger concerns here isn't so much punting, it's field goal attempts. 
I'm not worried about Ohio State punting as much as I am worried about Ohio State maybe having to kick too many field goals. So I'm going to go mm-hmm. under here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Ohio State players with a rushing attempt at four and a half. Oh, this is complicated because wide receivers. I'm going to go under. Oh, yeah. I'm still going to go under. <laughs> I made you hesitate at least. I'm still um, going under. Well, but also C.J. Stroud. He's like still going under. Oh, man. I, hold on. Like, if Stroud gets... If Stroud even gets sacked, which I think is given the talent at the defensive ends, like it's 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 likely he gets sacked at least once, right? Then you talk about Williams getting a, a rush. You obviously talk about Henderson getting a rush, and then like one reverse. That's a wide receiver with a rush. I'm gonna yeah, go I'm, under here, but I think that's a great number. Yeah, I think that's a great number. Agreed. I'm going to go under. All right. And a bonus one. Dams we give for the whole state of Michigan at 0.5. Ooh, less. Under, 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 under. I don't completely I don't... agree. Yeah, no. All right. We don't we don't give All a right. single dam. All right. Um, some more questions here. Uh, real quick, Jared. Who's your Buckeye Zach? How do you feel about a big margin victory this Saturday? Well, good. I think I think. Yeah, I, f- I feel good about it. I feel good. I mean, Especially how it the depends. offensive is playing recently. Yeah, I feel good. I also think it depends upon how you define big, but you, you've seen our final scores. All right. Also ask, can T10 secondary even tie our big three's shoes? Hill is a very good defensive back, but I, no, no. I, I just, I don't want to disrespect Hill. I think he's actually a very good player, but no. Mm-hmm. All right. What? From Cousin Jay, what's more surprising? Ohio State actually jumping Bama, which is the correct move. Arkansas is still ranked, or neither Purdue or Penn State are ranked. I think the uh, last one, honestly. Yeah, I think Penn State not being, I don't know. How many losses does Penn State have at this point? I, I think I they, four. yeah, how many? They have four losses. Four. How, and is that the same number as Arkansas? Yeah. Out of curiosity. Okay, so I see I see the point he's getting at. Um is for because he said Arkansas ranked two and Penn State not being ranked at three, right? So I, I get the point he's making, and I see you and I agree. Because he also says they're supposed to take injuries into consideration. And I think I don't think they did with Penn no, State. Because you had Clifford who was not himself for the Illinois game and out for the second half of the Michigan game, which I think attributed to two of Penn state's losses. Absolutely. Yeah. So I cousin Jay, I see the point you're making and I agree. Yes. All right. Nomad. What Buckeye has the single greatest performance against Teton? I, the the first thing that popped in my head was, was Troy Smith. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know if I'm going to die on that hill or not. Um, but that was the first name that popped into my head. Uh, yeah, Troy if, Smith. If yeah. for no other reason than, wasn't he the first Ohio State quarterback to go four and zero against Michigan? If nothing else, being the guy to do that means something. Yeah. And, and I mean, and I mean that two thousand and six. Um. Game yeah, two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that was the first thing that popped in my head. I'm not going to die on that hill. I didn't research I, this question. I mean, Curtis Samuel is another one, too. Sure. He's, he's had he's had great, especially if we're talking well. about moments. If we're talking about moments. His touchdown in overtime is a moment. JT Barrett not being short is a moment. Uh, I think JT Barrett also went four and oh as a well, no, because he didn't start that one year. But he, heck, even recently, but he started I mean, the game. Your, no, did he? Zach, no, he, he even did. Zach, he did start the game. Even Zach, even more recently, CO two as a freshman. That's a, that's a, that's a great point, Zach. I agree. Because like yeah. he was kind, Alave hadn't made a name for himself all year. I mean, this is and as a fairly low rated three star kid, the fact that he made a name for himself as a freshman at all is amazing. 
but he, he just was not on yeah. anyone's radar and then just busted yeah. out against Michigan. It was great. Yeah, three touchdowns in that game, including one of them being a punt block and pick that up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you melt goat cheese on top of pita chips, do you have nachos? Sure. I, I don't discriminate based off of cheese. That that should have gone and asked shenanigans. Mm -hmm. That's a Wednesday yes. question. <laughs> Woody versus Bo or Urban versus Booger Eater? It's got to be it's Woody versus Woody. Bo yeah. because because that was that was a Bo actually won was, some of those games. Well, <laughs> I, guess, I guess depending on how how you take this question, in terms of meaningful, like that was like whenever people think Ohio State versus Michigan, it's Woody versus Bo. It's that ten it's, year war. Yeah, and, th and they're then, still then when, writing books about the ten year war. Yeah, and then when Urban came over. And then Harbaugh came. He said, "Oh, everybody was talking about. Oh, this is the next ten year war. This is this is going to be, this is this is going to be great matchup and going to spark fire in the rivalry." And no, yeah. All right. Um, last question here from Nomad: Is Joel Klatt a Ohio State homer, and why is that okay? Joel Klatt, guys, we we need to we need to get our heads around something. Money is driving shit. OK, money is driving shit. Why is ESPN such SEC homers? Well, because they have a financial relationship with the SEC. Why is Joel Klatt, who is essentially the Kirk Herbstreet of Fox Sports? That's his role. He is the Kirk Herbstreet of Fox Sports. Why is he a Big Ten homer? Because Fox is financially invested in the Big Ten being successful. So. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hate ESPN people for being SEC homers, go ahead and love Joel Klatt for being a Big Ten, in, a, in, in other words, an Ohio State homer. Go ahead. But just yep. know it's all fake. Just know mm -hmm. that this is just Fox making money and Disney making money. And by the way, just in case anyone out there is like, but, but Disney bought Fox, not Fox Sports. Fox Sports is a separate entity from all of the Fox properties that were bought by Disney. ESPN, Disney, those people have no hand in the Big Ten Network or Fox Sports. Because I, right. I know a lot of people confuse that. Uh, th there's no relationship there. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Last question here. Or second to the last question. Uh, Duncan from the Discord. Um, at the risk of stealing Austin's uh, shtick here, Ohio State points over and under at 99 and a half. <laughs> You know what? Fuck it. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, actually putting money on it. Over. <laughs> Screw it. All right. I got I to gotta ask Sloopcast a question here, Jared. Uh, this is the rare most, host submitted question. Most memorable play or action during this rivalry? Memorable play or action? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Tressel going in front of a basketball crowd and telling everyone exactly how many days it was until they played Michigan. Mm -hmm. And it, and if you weren't alive and a fan at that moment, if you hadn't lived through the Cooper years, you wouldn't understand yep. because as good as Cooper was, the, the big knock on him was that he didn't quote unquote, get it. He was Mr. Well, Ohio State and Michigan's just another game on the schedule. And that's why he was bad at that game. Yeah. Um, um two things so, two things come to my hold, mind. Hold on. I, I, mean, the first I, I I'm not I am not done yet, Kyle. <laughs> and I think a lot of the people were worried. One of the things you heard when people were worried about Ryan Day taking over as head coach is that he wasn't like an Ohio guy, right? He, he's not from Ohio. He's from New Hampshire or Delaware. I forget. Um, but that's a good, that's a good answer. Hoosier. Um, and the people were like, Oh, but th does he get it? Cooper didn't get it. Does day get it? Well, the only thing you had to see was that big 10 segment of <laughs> yes. Ryan day, refusing to say anything nice about Michigan to understand that he gets it. And he also coached under urban Meyer who gets it. 
maybe more than anyone else ever has. Yeah. Because he lived through it. He lived through it. Uh, he, he was a GA. He was a GA during the 80s. Um, yeah, he he gets it. And yeah, my my memorable. I mean, the first one, I wasn't alive at the time. It's so it's, is it memorable? Ohio, it, it's when Ohio State <laughs> took down took down the banner when they came out onto the sure. field. Yeah, but and then that's my, not and then a my memory. One, <laughs> but then my second one is what is what Zach took here. <laughs> and Zach, that's Marcus Zach. Hall. And that and that's Marcus Hall giving the birds to the fans as he was exiting the toilet bowl. That's always fun. Yes. And that, that right. is Kyle's corner. <laughs> oh, and that's Kyle's corner. We're, we're counting that as Kyle's corner. All right, everyone. Yes, uh, we are close to an hour here. So it's Michigan. It's fine. If we're going to go close to an hour, let's do it for Michigan. Um, I can dig that. All right. Uh, that's it. That's today's show. I'm not even going to do any plugs. We're just going to end the show now. Um, Tonight's ending music was brought to you by a um, novelty punk band. Is that the way to say it? If you're not familiar with the Dead Schembecklers, then I uh, highly encourage you to stick around and uh, take in the Dead Schembecklers. That's, of course, if you're listening to the audio version. YouTube people, you're going to have to go down into the show notes and click a link because YouTube doesn't let us play music. So... With all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Dead Chembecklers. Mm-hmm.